been waiting for. Um, I definitely knew I was going to make a, a macronutrient video soon. But the first thing is, what are macronutrients? This is a question I get all the time because you'll hear me in many of my videos being like, oh, I'm counting macros or on Instagram and Twitter. And there's actually three different macronutrients, protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Proteins actually build and repair muscle tissue and boost your immune system. Fats provide and store energy, protect your organs, and carbohydrates make energy and protect your muscles. So macronutrients actually make up calories. One gram of protein is four calories, one gram of fat, is nine calories and one gram of carbohydrates four calories all right so the first step in uh, you know before you even decide your weight goals um, is to find your maintenance calories this is how many calories you can intake to maintain your current weight now, obviously the first thing you need to do is weigh yourself um, the second thing I would recommend downloading a food tracker application if you don't have a smartphone um, you can find food trackers online you can make an account. Um, I prefer Lose It. It's very user friendly, very simple to use. Um, not too many features, which is something I like personally. Um, next, without changing your current diet, track all your food for two weeks, even the bad stuff. So the pizza, the ice cream, the wings, whatever you're currently eating. At the end of your two weeks, I want you to analyze your data. It should be easy to find um, on the application your daily caloric intake. At the end of each week, um, you can go to reports and find how many calories you ate a day. Um, you can also even go to nutrient preference and find your macronutrients, so how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbohydrates, how many grams of fat. You can even, you can even like add even a little bit more nutrient preferences, such as sodium, if that's something that you're interested in, or, or cholesterol. So that can be very useful. So after the two weeks, you definitely want to analyze your data. Third, I want you to weigh yourself again and kind of create a hypothesis. So if your weight stayed the same over those two weeks, you can assume that your daily caloric intake is your maintenance calories. If you gained a pound, your daily maintenance calories must be less than what you averaged. So let's start putting this into action. Week one, you ate 2,100 calories. Week two, you ate 2,300 calories. So in order to find your average for those two weeks, you add those both together and divide it by two, right? It's pretty simple math. Um, and this would be considered your maintenance of calories, assuming that you stayed the same weight. All right, so we know that your maintenance calories is 2,200. Let's say your goal is 2,000 calories. That means each day you will be 200 calories under your maintenance calories. So 200 for seven days a week, that's 1,400 calories under budget you will be for that week, which translates into fat loss. You ate 2,200 calories. Let's say 120 grams of fat were in those 2,200 calories. 120 times 9 equals 1,080. And with the carbs, let's say you had 200 grams of carbs. 200 grams times 4 calories per gram equals 800 calories. And protein, uh, let's say that you had 80 grams of protein. 80 times 4 equals 320. That's how you got to the 2,200 calories. So let's now look at your new budget. 2,000 calories. Your fat was way too high with 120 grams, so let's put that at 45 grams. 45 times 9 is 405 calories. Let's up your protein just a little bit, especially if you're weight training and doing cardio. So let's say 100 grams. 100 times 4 is 400 calories. Now your recommended daily value of carbohydrates is actually 300. So for this example, let's do 300 grams times 4 which equals 1,200 calories. We add all those numbers up and we get 2,005 calories. All right, so why does this macro stuff even matter, right? And there's a couple different reasons. One, everyone is different. So everybody's body responds differently to different nutrients. You know, like I said, I mean, personally, a higher fat, lower carbohydrate diet is better for me. But I mean, everybody, like I said, everybody's different. I know a lot of people that respond 
off low, low fat diets and high, high carbs. So really you got to kind of play with the numbers to see what's optimal for your body. You know, two, um, it's easy to identify the problem. Like I said, we had easily identified that fat was the issue, at least what we guessed was the issue because 120 grams of fat is a lot for anybody. You know, and it's easy to manipulate those numbers. You know, hypothetically, you start losing weight, you get to, you know, you've been doing 2,000 calories for the last two or three weeks, and your body's not losing weight anymore. It's easy to adjust those numbers and to say, okay, well, maybe if I lose, you know, if I lower my fat a little bit, or what if I lower my carbs a little bit? It's easier to make those adjustments and be able to track it accurately. And three, I think it's just good to know what's going into your body, um, this overall health type thing. I'm sure I'll be getting into a fiber video soon enough because that affects these macro things too. But I hope you know more people are going to be tracking their information. Um, like I said, it's just kind of nice to see what you're putting into your body. I mean, even if you go to a doctor's visit and you know there's something wrong, your poop is black. I mean, they can instantly look at at your diet, or, or you can at least have an idea of like, well, I've been eating this, this, and this, and they can say, oh, well, blueberries have a lot of iron. A lot of iron causes your, your poop to be dark. I mean, so it's, it's good for your overall health, not just for losing weight. All right, so I decided to make an additional tips, um, quick, quick little additional tips, side notes, everything else I can think of, at least except for fiber because fiber is going to have to have its own separate video. But uh, the first tip in addition to, you know, tracking your nutrients is definitely drink a lot of water. 60% um, of your wa your body is water. I mean, that includes, it's going to help with digestion. It's going to help with absorption, um, transportation of nutrients, right? And it can actually control calories because when I drink a lot of water, I don't, my, my stomach feels full, you know, and I don't have that craving for other things. Two, eat two fruits, two servings of fruit two servings of vegetable a day, right? For a couple different things, reasons, obviously, overall health. Everybody remembers the, the food pyramid um, with all the different food groups. So definitely do that. And fruits and vegetables have fiber in them, which, like I said, that would be a later conversation. Three, avoid trans fat. Trans fat sits in your stomach. That's what, you know, is in McDonald's hamburgers. Um, obviously, eating clean foods is, is important. So try to avoid the trans fat. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I can think of? Well, if there is, I'll, I'll make sure to put it in the comments or description. But like I said, there's going to have to probably be a video on fiber. And I actually have uploaded it before, but I'll probably put my food list on there that I actually got from Dr. Lane Norton. Um, it's fairly, I mean, simple to follow, fairly reasonable as far as what foods to eat and what foods not to. I'm not going to lie. I do, you know, eat other things sometimes, including Chipotle a lot. I need to avoid Chipotle because, yeah, I need to avoid Chipotle because I eat it too much and it's really expensive. But, you know, that'll be discussed in a, a different video. But for now, hopefully this gets you at least started um, tracking your food and kind of gives you an idea on how to get to your weight goals. So I hope everybody has a good week.